The most famous English playwright in the world, of course, is William Shakespeare. And he has had just as much influence on English literature as the Bible. Yet very little is known about his life. There's no record of the exact date of his birth, but there are records that he was born in Stratford-upon-Avon and was baptized there on April 26th. He was classically trained in grammar schools, and at the age of 18, he married Anne Hathaway. He had a daughter and twin sons, one who died at the age of 11. But nothing further is known until his rise to fame in London as an actor and playwright. Not much is known of his acting, but his skill as an actor appears in his writing, since he understood perfectly what stagecraft was all about. He wrote his plays for actors. He seemed to go to London at the right time to perfect his craft. He had the fortune to start writing during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Under her rule, London was the center of the kingdom and the court was the center of power. The court was where all the power, influence, and authority flowed. Thus, courtiers were the people with power. Courtiers were the ones who funded the arts. Through their money, theaters were built and acting companies sponsored. Through their interest, theater seats were filled. Most of the religious middle class despised the theater, thinking it a place of moral corruption. So the court system was the only way a writer could survive. This was all thanks to Elizabeth I's interest in the arts. Elizabeth was not only popular, but she also helped lead England out of the feudalism of the Middle Ages and into a more centralized England that had reached great prosperity. She had become the symbol of the new nationalism in England. She supported the theater, attended the dramas, and encouraged its growth. This also made her popular in court and among the commoners. In other words, Shakespeare lived in stable times thanks to Elizabeth's strong leadership. Thus, not surprisingly, Shakespeare's first major success as a playwright was through his history plays. All these plays show the upheaval surrounding a weak monarch. The glimmering hope in the background is a stable government with a monarch that could be unwavering and legitimate. Shakespeare started his writing career as a collaborator. Since plays were in high demand, two or three plays were needed per week, and most plays were written by the writers in each company. This led to many writers joining together to collaborate. Critics speculate that this was how Shakespeare started out. There is really no record of Shakespeare until 1598, when an important source on poets and dramatists at the time was published, which is Francis Mayer's Wit's Treasury. Of Shakespeare, he writes, as Platus and Seneca are accounted the best for comedy and tragedy among the Latins, so Shakespeare among the English is the most excellent in both kinds for the stage. He lists most of Shakespeare's history plays up to this time, such as Richard II, Richard III, Henry IV, and King John. By the 1600s, Shakespeare turned to romantic comedies, such as As You Like It, Twelfth Night, and then finished his career with tragedies like Hamlet, Macbeth, and Othello. He apparently retired by 1610, where he focused on his romances and tragic comedies, like Cymbeline and The Winter's Tale. He then died in Stratford-upon-Avon in 1616. Over a 25-year period, Shakespeare apparently wrote 38 plays. None of his plays have been collected together as we have seen them today during his lifetime. It was not until 1623 that two men from Shakespeare's company published all his works together in what is called the First Folio, but this was full of errors and inaccuracies. Two more folios followed over a 40-year period, but not until 1709 were his works seriously edited. There are still arguments today as to the official authorship of many of Shakespeare's plays, but we won't get into that. The order that Shakespeare wrote the plays is in strong debate among scholars. 
Many would agree that Henry VI Part I, which is a historical drama, was Shakespeare's first play written in 1590. Critics still debate whether he wrote it alone or in collaboration with another writer. There is a record of its performance on March 3rd, 1592. His first comedy was The Comedy of Errors, and the first great tragedy was Romeo and Juliet, though the more obscure Titus Adronicus was actually the first tragedy. His last play was Two Noble Kinsmen. It too is speculated to have been written in collaboration with someone else. This is the end of our discussion on Elizabethan drama. I hope it was informative for you, and we will take a break and return with a lesson on William Shakespeare's great revenge drama, Hamlet. I hope to see you soon. Bye.